with the chip shortage, things like the Raspberry Pi, uh, the price went up and also availability, and that created a problem. Okay, obviously, we did create the teacup board, and uh, I, I do really enjoy this. I want to get back to it. But the prices on these are still kind of high, if you ask me. Originally, uh, if I recall, they were like $25, $35. And of course, you have to add a power supply. As, as cool as these are, they just don't fill the bill necessarily all the time. There was, uh, during that, after that chip shortage and just kind of this general death of romanticizing the new exciting Raspberry Pi, was, which by the way is, uh, ooh, I don't remember, this is maybe a gig of RAM, maybe 512, right? And it is fun to deal with those kind of constraints. So as you see that I'm holding up here is a thin client. And this thin client, it takes, uh, it does a lot of the same things. It's got a, a one gigahertz processor. Get, get my specs out. Hold on, I have them written down. Has an x86 processor. And that is the Via C7 Eden. In the beginning, man used fire to cook his food and warm his family. If he could not start a fire, he would surely die. Early man, however, had access to primitive computers, which he found capable of warming himself. The faster these computers got, the more heat they gave. Then, one day, everything changed. People and times evolved. We are now at the dawn of a new age in computing, introducing Eden, the new embedded system platform from Thea. this up on eBay for eight dollars. Now it didn't have a power supply, same thing as the Raspberry Pi, didn't come with a power supply, but it was eight dollars for the for the thing. And actually I bought five of them at once. So I had five of them. Okay. Uh, it did come with an IDE hard drive inside. It's a little flash card and uh, it was 128 megabytes which, as we saw from the teacup, is actually, you, you can fit a lot of stuff on there. In fact, that's what they do here. This is a thin client, right? So it's used in airports and cash registers and all sorts of things that where you would have a little mini machine that links back to a bigger server, uh, like a terminal server or a Citrix server, and it delivers um, delivers the video. And that's really what this is designed to do, right? Is deliver a remote experience over a remote desktop protocol, which it does pretty well. And along those lines, we'll say, okay, number one, this one does come with some storage. It's IDE, which also means that technically you can hook up an IDE CD-ROM to it. You could hook up an IDE hard drive to it. You can get an SD card adapter for that, okay, and have and have ample internal storage. This runs at uh, one gigahertz. It's the C7, so it runs at one gigahertz. You can have uh, five, twelve megabytes, two gigabytes, and two gig two gigabytes is as much as I I saw. This is a 32-bit x86 processor, right? So before we have ARM, we have, oops, MIPS, a MIPS processor, 
and in here we have x86. So now I have, <laughs> arguably, I have all the major processor types, okay? Now the difference is, uh, while obviously you can get these for cheaper, this costs about $50 to make, this is 30, 50 plus dollars in order to get your hands a hold of, and that's nice, but it's still kinda, kinda expensive. This was $8, okay, $8. And the power supply, I never had a problem not being able to deliver it enough power, uh, is 12 volts. So it's a 12 volt barrel jack right there. Probably have one of those already. I actually occasionally just use a uh, old Radio Shack 12 volt power supply goes in there nicely. Uh, there is a cutout here because there are two internal USB ports on board that you can uh, use a JST connector to get to. And they're, uh, what they use that for is there are some models where they have a Wi-Fi module built in. You've got two uh, PS2 ports, right? Uh, you have a DVI port, which does do analog video out like to VGA and you do have an ethernet port. So then along the front you have two USB ports, you have your speaker port and you have a mic in port. So let's see uh, if I compare the two I've got DVI video out I've got digital video out here, uh, which obviously is HDMI, but can take an adapter. Uh, I have four USB ports. Okay, I have four USB ports. Oh, but there's plus two more internally. Uh, I have Ethernet. I have Ethernet. And uh, let's see, what else? Uh, obviously, this one has two more ports, which are the PS2 ports. I'm not going to kind of argue about that very much right now. And then what this has is on board an IDE controller, which is pretty, just I, in my opinion, a big plus. All right, uh, already comes with a case. Normally when you buy these new, they don't come with cases, so already has a case. Already has heat sink on there. Um, and then this has upgradable, upgradable RAM. This introduction video is probably already going to get too long, so we're going to follow it up. Let me give you an idea of the series of videos that we're going to go through here talking about the CX-0. We're going to run Linux. We're going to run FreeDOS. We're going to boot off of an external drive. Uh, we are going to um, make this into a couple of the things that people commonly do with this. Right, so for example, we're going to make it into a phone system. We're going to, what is it? We're going to be able to play some videos. That's with a big asterisk because what this does not have that this does have is an MPEG accelerator. Okay, so but we can play music, we can do transcoding of music, we can rip CDs, uh, we can do all of these things. Plus, let's see, what are, what are, oh, uh, you can run X Windows on here, and uh, you also can, uh, you know, get like a word processor going, um, some, some X sort of stuff, and with a modern version of Linux as well. Now, originally I'd run into some problems, uh, particularly with booting the, uh, the 6 kernel. Hold on. Now, originally, I had run into some problems with the 6, uh, with the Linux 6.1 kernel because of uh, the, some issues with real-time clock, okay? And the 5x kernels were just fine and prior. Uh, but as we, as I found out with Teacup, for example, people really wanted to try and run um, a 6x uh, kernel. So we're going to do that. And to the rescue was an unsung hero, really, of the Linux community, I think. 
Alpine Linux. So Alpine Linux came to the rescue. Its kernel had no problem. Doesn't really necessarily surprise me based on its embedded history. Most folks will know Alpine from Docker, right? From containerization, LXD, uh, and, and, and building these the newest iteration in what we're using as it's not a virtual machine, but a containerized operating system, right? Or a containerized environment to run your, your software. So if you're already familiar with Alpine, guess what? They have a long-term uh, release of x86. They maintain the repository. And so from that repository, we're going to load this up. We're going to get X running. We're going to get. Uh, we're going to be able to play video. We're going to be able to do FFmpeg. Uh, we're going to be able to do a whole bunch of programming languages, and all in what I like to zero in on as, you know, it's it's like a perfect sandbox or a perfect garden. Think of it like your. It, while you can use this as a PBX or a music player you know, maybe a, a machine for the kids. This is a good appliance, okay, or something to tinker with, but it's cheap. And back to the the uh, Via Eden processor, okay, it, it doesn't require a fan. It's uh, got a big heat sink on here. So this is also quiet. It being 12 volts, it can be mobile. You can install this in your car. In fact, one of the reasons that I got back into this is because I was doing um, Moto Turbo stuff and uh, I, I wanted to have a device that I could dedicate to that. But back to my point, I digress. This is like a Zen garden for your mind. And that's where the Eden thing came back into me. This is a good learning playground to come back to to kind of assemble a machine that only does what you want it to do and for you to be able to explore that universe from within all right that's it for this introduction next time we're going to crack this open we're going to look at it a little bit more and we'll start getting into loading linux on it from scratch. Oh, did I mention build root? We can use build root also, and I'm going to have two tangents. We're going to do a build root, and we're going to do Alpine Linux, but most of the further along testing that I've done is with Alpine. Build root is more for an embedded type application. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Let me know what you'd like me to... Uh, what you'd like me to do with this. Uh, so like what kind of use case, let's, let's call this the CX zero challenge, right? What kind of use case would you want to see that the Raspberry Pi does, right? But can the CX zero do it? That's, uh, that's your homework. Leave a comment, uh, et cetera. I really need to ask for more engagement from everyone. All right. Happy hacking.